Welcome to the channel, everybody. We are continuing our push for Cavalier on the backup account, and we are getting really close. We'll be continuing on with Act 5, Chapter 4, Level 6, which is the final level in Act 5, which will get us on to Act 6 and our final six levels to become Cavalier. So let's go ahead and get right in there, guys. Take a look at what we're going to be dealing with and talk about how to get through this. Now, for this particular one, what we are going to do is we're going to start off right off the bat. We're going to go to the right. You're going to have two question mark champions there. Yellow Jacket is going to be the one on the right. He has no nodes on him, so it should be a fairly straightforward fight for you. Um, from there, then you'll go ahead and go up to the path selector and you'll select path D, either a power or buffet node path. We are going to take the buffet node path. Now with this one, every time you activate a buff, it's nullified and the defender gains 10% regen health. This actually has a 7 second cooldown on it, so if you're able to gain multiple buffs, back to back it's only going to nullify that first one and as long as you're not as long as you're done gaining them by the seven second mark it's not going to re-trigger so you can't actually get a few buffs in you're just going to lose your first one now as i said on this path first off you're going to have yellow jacket uh, and then that's going to open up to get to the path with no notes after that on the actual path you're going to have Archangel, who not only has the Buffet node, but also Enhanced Abilities, Enhanced Bleed, and Enhanced Poison. After that, you'll go over to Ant-Man, who has Energy Resistance, Physical Resistance, and All or Nothing. Meaning the Defender is less likely to throw an SP1 or an SP2. He So if you're trying to bait those out, trying to avoid the SP3, it's just not going to work. More than likely, he's just going to keep pushing to that SP3, and he's going to uh, do that. So you're going to have to be careful. Make sure you get a good uh, health pool, because taking that SP3 to the face is not going to be a nice thing. After Ant-Man, we're going to go over to Kingpin. Now, Kingpin has Bane of Hell's Kitchen, which increases his attack and also causes path, uh, passive evades to fail. He also has Gambit's Fate, which at the beginning of the fight, both of you are going to get a random buff, both you and Kingpin. And then uh, he also has Double or Nothing, which will cause that random buff to re-roll. So keep that in mind that you are going to get an extra benefit, but so is he. Again, he does have the buffet, uh, Buffet node on it as well. Then you're going to go from him over to Winter Soldier, who has Enhanced Bleed, un Unblockable Finale, meaning once he gets down to that last 25% health, he is unblockable. And then Bleed Letting, which includes, increases the duration of his bleeds. So having a Bleed Immune Champion against him is going to be critical after that we're going to go over to gambit who has de who is very defensive and then also has rolling thunder which means that the longer the fight goes the more his special attacks do for damage so be careful you don't want to drag that fight out for too long especially not and then turn around and catch a special because it will hit for a lot more than you're expecting the longer that fight goes on after that, we're going to go over to Stark Enhanced Spidey, who does not have any nodes as well. And finally, from there, we'll go on to the boss, who is Ultron for this level. Now, Ultron does have Vigor. Every 15 seconds, he's going to gain a regen timer that can be reset every time you get him to a 25% health mark. Meaning the, the 75, the 50, and the 25% mark. Keep in mind that uh, Ultron also has two other regions that are naturally built into his kit when he is awakened meaning when he hits 50 percent health or 30 percent health he also regens those can be nullified just by stunning him that it actually shuts those down completely so as soon as those trigger try and get a parry in and you can shut down those regions lastly he has in part ultron has an inactive fury armor up power gain or regen that is triggered any time that you put a debuff on him 
Now, if that debuff happens, he triggers one of these, and then instead of the debuff, and the debuff is nullified. So keep that in mind as well. Let's go ahead and go uh, take a look and see who I brought in and how it went. So as you're going to see here, I brought in Captain Marvel movie, Apocalypse, Colossus, Aegon, and Cable. Now Cable obviously was to make it so that I could have Apocalypse ready to horseman right away. Um, though we never actually used the horseman ability throughout this fight. Um, something I definitely should have done especially since it was part of the plan, and kind of just let it go. Um, obviously, Apocalypse, Aegon, and Captain Marvel movie are three of the, of the strongest champions on this account, and definitely were at the time that we went through this. Uh, so we were focusing on making sure that they were available. Obviously, Aegon's going to do quite a bit of work on the path. Apocalypse is there to also do quite a bit of work on the path. He does have that bleed immunity once he uh, builds up to it. Obviously, you can see here we took that first bleed off of Archangel, and that led us to the bleed immunity, and that means he is bleed immune for the rest of the time. We also have Colossus in there for the bleed immunity as well. Um, Colossus is going to do uh, quite a bit of work, but he would have done quite a bit more if we would have horsemaned him. Uh, so that was definitely a failure on our part. You can see here, Ant-Man is definitely going to be one of the ones that's a little bit more of a pain to fight in this one. Not that he normally is, but he definitely is on this one. He has so much going for him. And that all or nothing node definitely is, is something to worry about. You can see here where it almost took us out. Luckily enough, we were able to survive it just barely, but with the uh, multiple debuffs that he put on us, that was able to kick in our willpower, meaning that we were able to regen a, quite a bit of that back up, which helped out quite a bit. The nice thing about not having to worry about baiting the SP1s and SP2s, you can get in there and quite well eat up quite a bit of his power. Downside to it is on a champion like Aegon here, where we're trying to push up those combo meters as far as possible for the later matches. Um, you know, if we turn around and shift him into an SP3, we can toss away that entire combo meter with no control of any way of being able to prevent it from being lost. Unless we had brought in Star-Lord, who would have given us combo shield. Um, but obviously that's only going to work the first time that the combo meter is eaten up. So that is something to take into consideration. You can see here we brought in Apocalypse to go against Kingpin. Not a, a bad fight. Honestly, if we wouldn't have pushed him up to the SP3 there, we could have probably walked through him with little to no damage whatsoever. We did bring him in again for the Winter Soldier fight here. Um, obviously, he's got that uh, bleed immunity, so we don't have to worry about that. We could have turned around and brought Colossus in to finish up the fight since we took uh, we're already so wounded and probably should have done that. I'm not quite for sure what happened at this point, why we avoided doing things like that. Um, I think I was a little tired, to be honest with you, and just kind of forgot the plan as I was going through. But this, um, I mean, it was recorded long before I'm commentating it, so I'm not 100% sure what happened that night. Uh, but we do go ahead and get through Winter Soldier here. Um, Colossus does finish him off. Apocalypse took uh, a little bit more damage than, than he could stand, but obviously, um, you know, that unstoppable at the end makes it a little harder to avoid that damage. But we were able to finish him off, turn around, and brought in Colossus for Gambit here. Um, not necessarily the greatest counter, but at the same time, not necessarily uh, uh, bad either. Um, you can see here we're doing quite a bit of damage. We're not taking much out of him whatsoever. Uh, getting those parries pretty well. Able to continue to just kind of build him up here. We are taking quite a bit of a risk. We're almost to that SP3. Trying to bait out that SP2. Uh, finally get that done so that we can get back in there. Um, did get caught right there and that kind of ate up so much on us. That was something that we were kind of worried about. So we came out here for Stark Enhanced Spidey. Uh, the whole point was to use this match to prep Captain Marvel movie for Ultron. 
um, which we do for to a point, but I'm not getting nearly the parries in that I should be getting in. And obviously, for the most part, most of our charges so far have actually came off of that SP1. Now, we did just tip over to the point where uh, that's no longer the point. Uh, but we are trying to go ahead and get all the parries in. You see, it's working fairly decently here. I was, the plan was I was going to go ahead and parry up to 25, have it trigger, and then go ahead and finish him off. But we slipped up, and we were almost dead. So we kind of had to go ahead and finish him off a little bit early. I wanted to come into this Ultron fight 100% um, ready to activate my charges there. Unfortunately, it didn't work. We did get up to the point of being ready to do that, and I figured I could quickly and easily just eat him alive. But unfortunately, it tipped him directly into the SP3, and our indestructible got eaten up a lot quicker than I was planning for. So we went kind of went for the rotation. Everybody gets their shot. That's where we were at on this one. Knowing Ultron is one of those ones that uh, has a pretty big health pool. But it is also one of those things that, especially knowing that regen is going to be constantly kicking off. He's got a huge health pool. We just really wanted to do a decent amount of damage to him in a short time period. Um, I could have probably brought in a better counter for him than what we did. Uh, there are several Cosmic Champions that are really good against him. Um, obviously, we don't have a Hercules on the backup account, which is the ultimate counter to almost everybody. <laughs> um, we did recently get Gallon after this fight, uh, which may have been a better choice. Uh, but I kind of just ended up defaulting to Aegon here and let him do most of the work just because of the fact that as his combos go up, he was hitting for a lot more than what anybody else could do. Um, you can see though, we spent way too many revives on this. We could have, we should have been able to get through him a lot quicker. As a matter of fact, we're going to go down one more time here and have to finish him off, off of another revive. But we did finish him off and that does bring us through the entire path and that does open up Act 6 for us. Um, that takes us quite a bit closer to being un uh, to that Cavalier title. And that's going to come in really important here. Um, definitely trying to push that out. We are a lot closer than what the videos are showing, obviously, because of the fact I, I record these and then I have to take the time to edit them and get them out to you guys, um, which I appreciate the patience as the series comes out. You guys have been great with all the support. Again, I want to thank everybody since we finally did tip over 500 subscribers. We are still pushing towards that thousand subscribers, but I want to thank everyone 100% for all the support so far. And I... I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one. And trust me, there will be plenty more uh, next ones. We're going to be continuing the Cavalier, the Paragon, the Crystal Openings, the live streams on Sunday, and so many more things I have planned for the upcoming future. So I will see you guys back in the next one. Peace out.